of all the things scientists have dug up from the ancient world, this is the one I wish I could make everyone aware of. If I had children, it's the one that I would take them to go see in person. This is the unfinished obelisk in Aswan, Egypt, and you can see the people on it. It's about 140 feet tall. It hasn't fallen on its side. It wasn't buried. It was unfinished, and this is to move it to its base, which they've also found a short distance away. As for why I would show this to my children or to anyone interested in the past, is this right here. At some point, after months or probably years of working the site, and you can still see the marks from the workers' hand tools, they found a crack in it and had to abandon it. <clears throat> For any great works from a person, from a company, from a civilization, yeah. no. the part that you don't get to see <clears throat> and that you should see mm -mm. is no. all of this, no. all of the abandoned attempts, all of the wasted labor, all right of the now. dashed hopes, yeah. all of yeah. the hours and hours in the hot sun, yeah. at the end of which you just had to turn around yeah. and walk away. No. 3,500 years later, okay. it's still there. All right. All right, so I'm calling bulls, uh BS on the idea that they found a crack in it and then walked away. What do I got going on here? Let's take another look at this thing. Right there, there's the crack. Okay, so I'm calling BS on the idea... Oh, well, it's got a crack, so we got to walk away from it. I think that crack came well after they walked away from it. <clears throat> and let me explain here. So you've got this amazing stone, amazing monument, whatever you want to call it. Uh, somebody, a bunch of people were working on it, people that were experts very skillful very knowledgeable now who were those people and who would have been a great people and who would have walked away from it okay uh, to me it's it, it's very obvious but let me just make the case okay so if we go um let's let's just start Exodus 1 and think about the Hebrew people the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding mighty and land was filled with them all right now of course the the uh, Egyptians <clears throat> were in control right and they had uh, authority over them and they made them uh, made their lives bitter with hard bondage in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field all their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor right, think about that what do we got going on here? I got this thing zoomed in, don't I? All right, so that's not so bad. But um, I just want to give some views of this thing. Is this different? This one's different, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's different. And so this is the one we're looking at. All right, and you see the crack there? I think that happened over. A long period of time that's what I think I don't think oops uh, we got a crack let's leave it if that were the case there would be uh, I think several of them well why wouldn't they just tear it out and start using this area right here or whatever yeah whatever I don't care uh, you know you look <laughs> it looks like they cut out a bunch of it well why did they just stop and forget the whole operation why isn't it still going on today well I'm telling you it's because they skipped town we read about the Egyptians and how they were made to 
work with rigor, how they were mighty, exceeding mighty, multiplied, waxed, exceeding mighty. Right, and then their women were more lively than the Egyptian women. And the midwife said unto the Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, for they are lively. You think about, well, why were they lively? It's because of the Hebrew people were much more active, and they were, you know, into really forced into uh, extreme labor. They had to work very hard, and therefore they were more active, more energetic, stronger, and more knowledgeable in uh, these types of things. Yeah, the, the Egyptians didn't build this. It was the Hebrew people under the authority of the Egyptians. There's no doubt about it. And then of course when Moses said, let's go, they all went. They dropped everything and took off. Alright, you think about also, I want to, you know, just share a couple of people here you consider Daniel right Daniel and his uh, his buddies right and uh, the king spake unto Ashpenaz the master of his eunuchs that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes children in whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge in understanding science and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans all right, the children of Israel all right now to me it's very interesting you know all they did they you know they wouldn't eat the king's meat right they would just eat beans and peas and uh, drink water there okay very interesting but they were very very wise uh, knowledgeable they were experts if you will and um, uh, they stood out from the other people now also interesting you go to uh, Solomon for example he was wise and rich so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. So go back to Exodus. The people of Hebrew, they were exceeding mighty. And they were made to work with rigor. And their service in the field, their lives were made bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field right so <laughs> so who put this together who was working on this there's no doubt in my mind it was the Hebrew people and if I could let's do it right let's just do an overview real quickly all right An overview of Aswan, Egypt. All right, I just want to real quickly show you. Aswan is right there on the river, and if you were to really look at this stuff, and and I have I'm not an expert on it by any means, but um, if you back this out, you see the Red Sea, right? And all along this river, you have all types of uh, temples and pyramids and so on and so forth um, the Great Pyramids I believe is uh, right up here doesn't matter who cares alright so what happened was it, this was all of Egypt alright so 600,000 men <coughs> excuse me 600,000 men besides children uh, were counted so, uh, if if I'm understanding this correctly, there's 600,000 men, uh, which would have been there, meant there would have been 600,000 women, 
and probably 300,000 children, so about a million and a half people mixed in this land, this area, uh, with the Egyptians, right? So I think they all mostly resided along this river here, and then so when Moses said, let's get up and go, they went up, and they didn't go all the way up to where Cairo is, because uh, I think this was probably where the heaviest population was, and then um, they all would have migrated up here, and I forget exactly where they crossed the Gulf of Suez, also known as the Red Sea, and then ended up in the mountains of Ararat, or wherever, I forget where they uh, I, that's Noah, okay. So, anyways, the the mountain of God, I forget what they called it now. Uh, so, anyways, that's the path they would have took. I mean, they, that's, to me, it's crystal clear. They were here, and then they got up and left. Is there any evidence of it? Well, I think the pyramids, the obelisk, and all this stuff is evidence that they were there and they just got up and left. I don't believe the cracked theory. I think the cracked theory is cracked. I don't believe UFO aliens did it. And I don't believe that, uh, you know, the, uh, 250 feet tall people did it. Because uh, the bottom line is, at the end of the day, why did they just get up? and leave. There's only one logical conclusion. And it had to have been the Hebrew people.